I'm a program assistant with guards and um, like it is my tradition to always um, do um, short and long technical videos, uh, YouTube videos to help us out. Okay, so we have this program we run. We have um, um, regional sessions that we run every Saturday. And um, during one of those sessions, someone asked to know, uh, he said he finds it, he's unable to connect to um, a GCP instance from his Windows machine using SSH. Um, he's trying to use Booty. They are, they are, um, there's this tutorial on how to use Booty, um, generate the key, um, uh, generate the key, uh, private key in Putty, put it into Windows and, you know, all that. Uh, put it on GCP into the instance as created and all that. Uh, coming from a Linux background, I know the normal process is this. Um, using SSH keys, we have two keys. There's a public key and a private key. Uh, the private key is private. Okay, so if I wanted to authenticate myself to a remote machine, I would generate that key, both private and public. I will pass on the public key, um, pass on the public key to um, the remote machine. Then I'll use the private key to identify myself when I try to connect. So anyone can have the private key, uh, sorry, the public key. Uh, but um, for you to be able to connect to any system that holds the public key, you need to actually have my private key, okay? So private keys can be seen by anyone, but um, and public keys can be seen by anyone. But private keys are private to you alone, uh, unless you share it with someone else. Okay, so um, let me quickly run us through how to set this up. So the first thing is to generate a key. Okay, I've already generated a key on my system. Uh, let me launch my um, my Windows PowerShell. Um, I think this is called Terminal. Listed versions, different. Here you have options to create many tabs. Okay, so the other thing we will need is to run our PowerShell. Uh, sorry for the capitalization. PowerShell in um, administrative mode. Okay, so we'll do that. That comes up. Okay, let me expand this window a bit. Okay, so um, first thing is to generate the key. Okay, then you store the key in your SSH agent. But before all that, you need to have installed SSH on Windows. Uh, SSH is native to Linux systems and Mac uh, systems, but it isn't to, um, um, I think, earlier versions of Windows. But currently, um, it's still not, but you it is now possible to install it on uh, latest versions of Windows and use them as though you were using them on a Linux system. So the process is simple. Um, generate this key, share the public key with anyone. Uh, anyone who wants you to connect to them receives that public key. You use your private key to authenticate yourself when you're using SSH to connect to that uh, um, remote machine. Okay, so let's generate the key. I have a key already, uh, but let me still generate the key. So it's SSH um, key gen, I believe. Then you pick the type of um, um, cipher you wish to use. You could do help. I believe it spits out a lot. Um, okay, it doesn't really tell you what the B is. Um, small letter B. Um, that's it, the bits, okay? Tells you, the, not the cipher, sorry, the bits uh, that you'll be using. So let me quickly generate that one. B, and um, from the tutorial I saw, they use 4096. I think I did that previously on my system, so I can flip through my history, and it should give me that. Okay, so let me quickly do that. Okay. Okay, so let me just give me a moment. Let me quickly flip to that. Okay, so I don't see it. So let me clear my screen first of all. Um, let me look for, um, 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 I think I had that here. Okay. Okay, so let me close this. 
Okay, let's go up and see how to generate this key. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, SSH key gen. Uh, you can specify the bits. In our case, I want to do that. Um, I think I had, let me not miss out. Uh, perhaps I picked it in the wrong place. Let me go up back up here. Okay, so the type of key used here is different from what I'm using. Okay, so um okay so let let me let me just do that let me generate this um bit let me do two four two two zero four eight um okay let me do that one all right so now it asks uh, where do you want this key to actually be stored and what should it be called? The ID underscore RSA at the end is a cipher we're using. We could have used an ED cipher if you wanted to. Uh, Windows from the uh, documentation, they use the other one. Okay, so you can still use it. Google Cloud uh, in um, computing inst and, um, engine instances will still accept it. Okay, so um, uh, let's give it uh where we would like this to be stored windows is not case sensitive so even if you use uh lowest case letters it will still uh do what it needs to do okay it will still find its way um dot ssh uh okay so i i'll call it id underscore rsa underscore demo okay let me call it that i best practice you should give a passphrase okay so even if someone gets is an extra layer of security, even if someone gets your your private key, they will need to enter that passphrase to be able to use that private key. But I'm doing a demo, so I'm not putting anything. So that's been stored, okay? So we have a public and a private key. And if we do get child, uh, sorry, get child, um, child um see um sorry this users this uh dot ssh okay uh, if you do that uh their child i think i got that wrong let me go back um get content command content okay let me see well, the Windows experts, but let me see if I can get that. Okay, still wrong. Access is denied. Okay, it's not. Uh, the issue is that access is denied. Okay. Uh, permission denied. Okay, so let's do it using our file explorer instead. All right, so if I come down here hit here and um, I go users that's here and I do a Kojo which is me and I go to SSH and that's it okay so you see we have several I had several keys here they're all there all right okay so uh, if I were to run that uh, get content uh, then it would um from um an administrative uh, PowerShell window then it should be able to do that okay so we have the key there so what do we do let's go up to for, uh before we go there let's add this key uh there's this agent on your system when you install ssh uh it does the work of adding and storing these keys private keys Okay, so I'm going to add that key I just created to my agent. Uh, when you try to uh, run this agent, it might it will uh, it might error, and so that's because the agent isn't running. And the uh, there's um, I think it could be disabled. Okay, default I think is disabled. You have to re-enable it by running this command here. Okay, so in their case here, they set it to automatic. That means it starts up, you know, um, 
uh, when your system starts up but i don't want that to be the case i want mine manual so you will run this command from an administrative window and change this one to whichever one you like i used manual okay so i want manual means anytime i just run the command ssh agent it will start up uh, that service uh it will start and then run and then closes after doing what it needs to do okay so i have done that already so now let me add that key using the ssh add command down here so let me go up that service needs to be running so that you can add keys to it so i'm going to add that key um ssh um add um uh, this is the way uh, env should be represented user profile okay that's an environmental variable in windows that represents uh a path to um you the user your own directory on the system okay so the key was called id underscore r s a demo okay so it's private uh if you look here you see that public keys have the extensions of pub and the private ones don't so i'm picking that one and um Okay, so that's been added. Okay, so it's there now. All right, so what do we do next? We need to get the public key. So I'm going to do notepad, um, still same location, users uh, dot SSH um, ID underscore RSA demo pub. Okay, so if you do this, it opens in uh, my notepad. Now, um, don't, don't add anything to it, okay? So it should be one line, just one line. So move to the end of the line and you should see the name. Uh, um, I call it an identifier that is used to identify this particular key. Okay, so we're gonna be picking the first part of that. Okay, I think I did something I added. That's not what I'm supposed to do. Okay, it's supposed to be like that. So we are going to pick the first part, which is a Kojo in my case, uh, at Udoyen hyphen HP. HP, uh, that's my computer name. And of course the user is a Kojo. Okay, so this is what we'll be picking. Let me highlight that, copy, and then go on to Google Cloud. Um, let's create an instance here. Okay, so let's go down to leave everything as is. Go down to advanced options, go down to security, and then go down to manage access, and then add item. Okay, so I'm going to paste that one there. All right, so if the key is not formatted properly, uh, of course, um, um, GCP will let me know. Okay, so let's create that one. Let's create that instance. Okay, so meanwhile, we'll come back here. All right, so we're going to SSH into it. So SSH, uh, high I there represents uh, identity. Okay. And I'm going to pick rs rsa demo that's the private key and the name is a kojo okay my name on my system and what's the ip address of my instance i come here and take the public ip okay copy that and go back and put that here okay and then let's see what happens okay Say warning, remote host identity has changed. Um, please contact your system administrator. Um, okay. Host key verification failed. Um, 
I did this previously and so I need to okay so let's do this let me okay let me go to my directory okay so I added that let's see I did add this key okay demo I added that key all right so let's see how we can resolve this so let's say our host key for this has changed uh, host key has changed let me print verification field let me copy that all right so let me paste that in here and uh, let me remove the IP address fp4 okay so let's do this okay let's see how that can be resolved okay uh-huh okay so okay Okay, ask that we redo the key generation. Okay. Okay, let me go back that, that, let's see if there's any other option. Let's see if something that can remain and we can fix that. Host, here is a simple solution, for example. Okay, so it removes that. So let's go, okay, so remove the key. Let's go to our shell. Let's come back here. Let's bring up that. So we want to remove this. So we go here and then we do key gen, gen, and then pass this. And then, uh, okay, I missed, I missed that, I missed that. So let me, let me put that properly. Okay, so that's gone. Not found, not found, not found. Okay. Okay. Original contents retained as this dot old. Okay. Non host updated. So let's try that again. Let's see what happens if it complains, then we know we're in trouble. Okay, it doesn't complain. So we remove the other credentials, do yes. And okay, so there we go. So we are now on our application. We can install, let me update it and then, okay. Okay, so let me update, let me install something. Let me check if an application is there. Uh, sorry, Tmux. Okay, it's not there. So do a uh, sudo apt install tmux, tmux. Okay, okay. All right, so, okay, so that's been installed. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, let's SSH in there and check to see, um, right okay so okay so let's see if what we did let's do which oh so that was installed for that user and not for everyone okay okay instance one all right so oh okay so let's see let me run this here and it's there um, okay it's not there for this particular user okay so it's not there so if we go to user being tmux let's see let's do lists uh, use R, R, R bin, K, 
Okay. Okay, let's 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 grab for that. Uh, T Max. Okay, so T Max is there. Okay. T Max is there. Um Okay, let me do that again. Okay, so it's there. Okay, I ran only just which without passing uh the binary uh um file that I'm trying to locate. Okay, so Tmux is there. So you see we've been able to connect to Windows. Okay, so um it's very simple. Uh this same process can be done using um Uh, the same process can be used using uh, can be done using putty, but um, um, this is uh, a bit more simpler. Uh, but of course, you can always use that. So that's this is another way in which you could do that one. All right. So leave your comments, uh, your comments and your likes, and thank you for watching. Bye bye.